Let the Wrong One In is almost the identical title to one of the best vampire movies ever. It just changes one word. Well, this Irish comedy horror from 2021 doesn't really have anything in common with the Swedish masterpiece, but can it provide a good time? A young supermarket worker discovers that his older brother is a vampire and must choose whether to help him or slay him. Okay, so just know right off the bat, this movie is a lower budget vampire film that uses the standard rules of vampires and vampire hunting as its backdrop. The setup is we first watch a hen party full of Irish women drinking and running within Romania, when then one of them has an unfortunate encounter with a dude with sharp teeth and a jonesin' for blood. She also then becomes a bloodsucker. Now we then flash to sometime presumably right in the near future when this dude wakes up in the middle of a park. He's got holes in his neck, barely remembers the massive partying that he did the night before, and is now going back to his mom and younger brother's house in the hopes of laying low so that his skin doesn't fry in the sun. So the story's full of conveniences and quirks, like a collection of taxi driving vampire hunters that roam the streets on the lookout for the undead, just waiting to drive spikes into their hearts. And how they know when and where vamps are cruising around, that's not really an important detail to get bogged down with. Because, I mean, come on, the ridiculousness of this movie, it lies more in the interactions between Matt, the younger brother, Deco, his older brother, their ma, Henry, a hunter who's after Deco, and Sheila, the vamp intent on taking over the populace. Now, for the most part, the acting in this, it's kind of stiff and uncertain, despite some of the cast having some decent credentials. But the acting, good and bad, it didn't negatively affect the enjoyment of the movie. There are so many drawn-out sequences that can be shocking, funny, and gross, but they can also drag sequences down in pace, diminishing the impact of a scene. Now, for example, there's a situation where Henry, Deco, and Matt are all in a room. Only Matt, though, has the ability to move about freely. Now, the exposition during the scene, it is lengthy, focusing on a lot of back-and-forth quibbling that doesn't lead anywhere, and then repeated actions that were just geared for chuckles, but they took too long and then became unfunny. Now, so far, it probably sounds like I didn't totally like this movie, but by the end, I had fun with it. The relationship story between Matt and Deco, it's touching, also sometimes very dysfunctional, which then contributes to some funny moments. And there are a couple of times that featured unexpected actions, and these made me laugh out loud because of their abruptness, and then the visuals that typically accompanied the action. The banter, despite being a little bit stiff, it does factor in some heartwarming moments in addition to the absurdities. Now, I had fun with Deco's persona because he's this bumbling guy who really could use a leg up, but he keeps getting in his own way. He comes across as a total moron, but there are moments that we see outstanding character growth where he totally understands why a change would be good, and then he tackles the opportunity. Now, on the whole, the movie does feel too long, even though it's only 100 minutes. Realistically, 10, 20 minutes, they could have been shaved, making scenes more efficient and then filled with less fluff or stammering. A faster pace would also help keep the story from being uneven, taking advantage of the urgencies of the plot and then allowing it to drive the narrative forward in a quick but unrushed way. Now for the violence aspect of this, there are some pretty great uses of blood and gore. Typically, there is a lot of spurting and spraying. And not just once or twice, but I mean just enough to douse or even drown a character from head to toe in bright red blood. The special effects are also executed pretty well too, creating disgusting but convincing visuals. And whether that be a vampire just beginning to burst into flames because of sunlight, or when innards become outards thanks to something sharp and pokey tearing through a person's flesh. We also get to watch some feeding frenzies. While this isn't overly graphic most of the time, we are shown enough to make you go... Ugh. Now, I put on the subtitles to watch this. That's not because they're speaking Irish Gaelic or something, but the Irish accent is so thick sometimes, and they speak so stinking fast. I mean, I didn't want to miss what was being said, especially when Matt and Deco are going at it. I mean, they sometimes mumble through their interactions, and without those subtitles, I don't think I would have understood them. In the U.S., this is available on Shudder, and even though it's a couple of years old, it's still a fun, if not serious, vampire movie. The grisly elements are visceral and effective, mixed with a story that takes a while to find its bearings, but ultimately focuses on a sweet, charming, and snarky family tale. The acting is a bit wanting, most likely due to uncertain direction, but the characters do become endearing, leading to a surprisingly engaging narrative with some entertaining comedy and brutal imagery. Don't take this movie seriously, and you can have a good time with it. Otherwise, the shortcomings can become way too glaring and make this a miserable experience. 
There's sex, no nudity, a ton of profanity, and a lot of gory violence. I give Let the Wrong One In two and a half out of five couches. Now, I didn't realize it, but this was directed by the same person who did Stitches, another low-budget campy horror that's fun if you don't take it seriously. So what are some horrors that you can recommend to me? I'm doing my best to watch and even review a ton during this spooky season, so let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.